In this video I've condensed down about four days work into 20 minutes to let you see the process that I use for creating my ecclesiastical embroidery. It starts at the computer with a drawing and here I'm carefully creating a line of stitching around the yellow line which is my initial input. I'm just going to do a very quick draft here to let you see the process. It's speeded up about 20 times. This is just for a very small Celtic knot. Different stages. I've got to do an outline. I've got to create a zigzag around it to hold the stitching down. Those purple lines show where my overs and unders are going to be in the Celtic knot. It's my tack down stitch. Now I'm doing my satin stitch, telling the embroidery machine exactly where to put the stitches when I start stitching it out. That's what it looks like. Got to tidy up all the little details, fine adjustments to make sure that it's right. Then I transfer the design through to the cutting software and create outlines that the laser cutting machine knows where to cut for my applique shapes. And here's the laser cutter. Switch it on and it always takes a minute or two to do a little song and dance before it's ready to cut. It's got to move the head back to the start point. And once it has, I can open the lid. And then I can put in the fabric that I'm going to cut. In this case, for this piece, I'm using the St. Columba tartan. And I've got to spread it carefully, make sure there's no wrinkles in the fabric, that I've got it in exactly the right position for cutting. Then I've got to tell the laser cutting machine exactly where it's going to put the, the cuts. I'm watching on the screen there, checking where the head is positioned, telling it where it can do its cutting. And then once I've got it all ready to go, I just tell it to cut. You can't really see it very easily there, but you can see a little bit of the fumes that it's making and the odd flash of light. That process took about 15 minutes, but it's all cut now and I'm taking out, first of all, the small pieces that can be lifted out in a oneer. But for this particular design, part of it is longer than the space that the laser cutter has to cut it. So it's got to be cut in two parts, or rather one part cut two different sessions. So here I'm just taking away some of the excess fabric and that will just go into the compost bin because it's pure wool so there's no wastage there. And then I'm putting in a scrap of, it's, it's like a kind of tissue which I use as embroidery backing but this is a spare piece and I'm just pegging it in place and I'm going to use this to cut out an outline of the second section of that big piece so that I know exactly where to position this piece to make sure that the cut carries on from where I left off. It's all got to be carefully positioned. No room for error on this. Here you can see the piece previously cut lining up with the holes on the tissue that have cut. And while that's finishing off cutting, I'm just going to get one of the embroidery machines ready to start the stitching. As for the laser cutter, this particular piece needs to be done in two sections. So the bottom section 
of this, which is for the front of a chasuble, is actually being stitched on this small embroidery machine. And at the moment it's just stitching out a marking line to show me exactly where to position my fabric. So it's given me a baseline and a center line because I'm going to be stitching the bottom center of the front of the chasuble. So having stitched that out, I take the frame out and this bit's speeded up. I'm just positioning my chasuble, which has already been cut out, and positioning it exactly where I want it on the frame and pinning it in place so that the fabric doesn't slip while it's being embroidered. And then it's back to the embroidery machine and clip it exactly in place. Click it in place and spread the fabric over the sides so that nothing's going to get caught up inadvertently in the stitching. And now it's stitching out an outline. This is an outline for positioning of my applique shapes that are going to form the decorative elements of this design. So I've taken that off and here's my applique shape and the first thing to do is to check exactly which way round it should go because the design's not symmetrical and the last thing I want to do is put glue on the wrong side of it. So this gets spread on my gluing table and I use a temporary spray adhesive. holds the fabric in place for a little while just while the stitching happens so that nothing can slide about and then it's a question of carefully positioning it and for a piece like this that has these spiral elements it's really important to make sure that they are accurately positioned fiddly job and there's usually a little bit of adjustment needed. And once I'm happy with it, press it firmly down and then I can put the piece back in the embroidery machine. Just adjusting everything to make sure that no fabric's going to get caught up in the stitching. And then set it going. Change there to a different needle because it's going to stitch out with a different colour. This time it's stitching out with a gold thread. The first thing that it's done is I've programmed it to stitch out an open zigzag. And I can just check that it caught in all the edges and then it's ready to start doing the decorative work. And this whole piece took about maybe 45 minutes to stitch out. Stitching at a rate of about 800 stitches per minute. And you can see there the heavy satin stitch that it's stitching with the gold thread. Now it's doing a bit of further embroidery on top of the tartan. And the computer will tell me how much longer I've got to go on the design. So that I can keep a check on it from another room because the embroidery machines are noisy. Of course, inevitably you get the odd snarl up of thread here the machine's stopped because it's chewed up some thread and I've got to trim off the, the bit that's gone wrong, make sure I've got rid of all the unwanted bits of thread, cut them away with a pair of fine scissors 
and re-thread the needle. The metallic threads that I use for my embroidery, some of them are more temperamental than others, but some do have a habit of breaking. Then I've got to tell the machine to go back to where it started the, the bit that went wrong so that it stitches over that. And now it's just about coming to the end of this design. This particular design is inspired by some of the motifs in the Book of Kells. And this is one of the snake headed bits of knot work. Now that that embroidery is finished, I can unpin and tear the embroidery away from the stiff backing. It's a cotton backing, but it's cotton fibres rather than woven, so it can just tear away from the embroidery. Now I move to the big machine and here I'm putting the same backing fabric onto the frame of the big machine. And this one will stitch out pieces that are up to a metre wide, or in this case a metre long. And that's the design that's going to go onto the piece. So I'm just sending the design to the embroidery machine. And now I'm setting the machine so that it's going to stitch using the right colours of thread. There are 15 needles on this machine, so it can take 15 wheels of thread. And I've got to tell it exactly which colours to stitch at each stage of the design. And then what I've got to do is tell it to check out the fit, it's doing a trace around the extremities of the design so that I know that it's all going to fit on just in case anything has moved. And now I'm stitching out placement lines because I did my design in two parts. It was just slightly longer than the metre space that I have. I've stitched out markers so that I know exactly where to position my fabric for the next part of the design to go on. So I'm now stretching everything in place. And take the clips and clip the fabric. I do that all over being very careful with this positioning. I've always cut the chasuble piece longer than I need it so that I can go by where the embroidery is positioned and trim away any excess later. Now I've got to make sure that the edge of this chasuble doesn't get caught up in the embroidery machine. So I'm just rolling it back out of the way under those needles and I shall just pin it to stop it, stop there being any danger of it getting caught in the machinery. This is one of these things where you check and you check again and you'd be absolutely certain that you've got it right. Make sure nothing's going to get caught. And then you can start the machine going. And at this stage, what it's going to do is it's going to stitch out an outline for the placement of my applique shapes. So now it's starting to stitch. 
and I always watch when I first start stitching to make sure it's doing it right. Now I've got this piece that I cut out. This was the one that was cut in two sections and I was just checking there which way round it was to go. And now having turned it over so that I can spray on the back, I'm just spreading it out so that the whole piece is laid out flat. Very difficult with a piece like this which has so many opportunities for the fabric to twist and distort. And then take the spray Then I'm back at the machine and positioning it really carefully, making sure that everything's in the right place. <clears throat> it's very easy for the fabric to get distorted, particularly for the bits that are cut on the diagonal. So there's a fair bit of manipulation of the fabric at this stage. So that's the main piece and I'm just pressing it down to make sure that there are no wrinkles, no bumps and it's all in the right place and ready to go. But then up here at the top I've got another piece that needs to go on. There's a cross that's got to fit into that space. So I've got it here ready and position it. That's an even armed cross, but there is a diagonal twill on the fabric, so you've got to make sure that you've put some a piece like that in so that the pattern matches up from where it was cut out of the tartan. That's it all ready to go. And once again, it will stitch out an open zigzag just to catch down all the pieces of fabric. Of course, if I was to stand and watch that, it would be like watching paint dry. <clears throat> but after a couple of hours of stitching, we're getting there. This is some of the detail that's been stitched out all inspired by the Book of Kells. And it's just coming up to the end of the design now, it's almost finished. When it gets to the end, it stops, does a couple of locking stitches, trims the thread and moves back to the centre and changes the needle as though it was ready to start doing the design again. Now of course I could do the design again but all my chargeables are one-offs so the chances of ever using that design again, certainly with those colourways, is very remote. And this is the finished chasuble after I've done all the embroidery. That, the back different from the front. That was the front that you saw embroidering and here's the front here. Again in more detail.
So that's a week's worth of work in 20 minutes.